Hey Pox community, Bombman007 bringing you a, another tutorial on the behalf of TCGBay.com. Go there for all your Pox Nora rune needs. Alright guys, so today what I'm going to try to do is give you a tutorial on some basic gameplay uh, things that you need to know for Pox. Now this is a brand new tutorial, a uh, brand new uh, account here uh, that I've named Tutor Guy. So um, what we're going to do is hopefully I'm going to use the Tutor Guy account to make a uh, completely gold based uh, battle groups and things like that. So you folks can see that it is possible uh, to do it with gold. Now it might take some time and patience but every single day when you first log into Pox you've got your tabs across the, the top. Well the launch pad offers you every single day two daily skirmishes. They give 300 gold apiece typically uh, for running those. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to run the uh, Ewan Stands Again daily skirmish. And as I run this uh, daily skirmish using the Burning Tree deck which is available for folks that are brand new to Pox, um, you know folks without any runes at all, they give you this battle group to run through. Now you know, some guys might not think that it's strong enough to actually win the skirmishes and stuff, but it, but really it is because the AI, AI honestly is kind of poor. Uh, so, you know, really any type of deck can win. Um, now, one of the things that uh, you want to do, especially in rank play, is you want to scry to get to the runes that you need in order to win the game. Now, um, we've got uh, quite a few runes available for here, and so what I'm looking to do is to get to this font as quickly as I can. In Pox Nora, you have to capture fonts in order to uh, create more Nora. Your shrine by itself will generate 45 Nora a turn, okay? Plus, um, since um, the computer basically has me going first, I began with uh, 80 Nora. And it added 45 Nora for my shrine in order to begin. Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, it had me going second. Uh, if you go first, you just begin uh, with a lower number Nora. The player that goes second begins with 45 added to from your shrine. Uh, kind of as an advantage for not going first. So, um, what we're going to try to do is get to this font as quickly as we can. Now, I'm running half Cathir Forest and half Underdeps. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and throw out the... Uh, we'll throw out the Murphy. This old guy's a flyer. Um, he can stealth. And one of his great abilities is, is any stealth champion around him, um, even if they're damaged, they don't lose their stealth mode. So, it, it's a pretty neat little champ. Okay, and since we've got this little guy, we're going to go ahead and for 25 Nora, um, we're going to go ahead and throw the sapling out and play. Now, here is our total Nora. Okay, so we've currently got 55. Now, after I throw him down, it's going to show you that after I deploy this champion, there's going to be 30 left. All right. So we're going to throw the sapling in play. So now I've got 30 Nora left, and I've got the two champs in play. Now, we're going to end turn, since that's about all we can do this turn. Peter's going to move his guys towards the font. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move our champs. Now, what a lot of guys do is they like to move the champ all the way to zero. So I'm going to move this guy all the way out here to zero. All right, well, what you'll notice a lot of um, expert uh, players do is... Instead of running a guy to zero that gives him no options, and you know that next turn he's only going to have five AP, because every turn your champions gain AP equal to their speed, up to a maximum of their speed plus four, or if you run a Kathir Forest, either a split or a full faction, um, you actually get your speed plus five. So basically, the little sapling here can store as many as 10 AP in a turn, and our Merc Demon can store as many as 11 if you're playing Kathir Forest. If you don't have Kathir Forest in your battle group design, then he speed plus 4, so a 10 max. So what a lot of players will do 
is instead of burning this guy all the way to zero AP, they're going to just move him to where you know you're going to have the maximum AP next turn. That is always equal to 4 if you're running a non Kathir Force battle group, or 5 if you are running Kathir Force as a part of one of your factions. So since I'm running Kathir Force, I can leave my champion parked at 5 AP, and next turn he will gain 6, which will give him his max AP cap for the turn. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and scry again, try to get some runes revealed here, and then we're going to end turn. We'll go up here and watch what the computer does. He's going to make a beeline for the battle group, or for the phonomy. So there he goes. He's trying to capture that font. Still not quite there. Alright, so now back to our turn. We added 45 Nora for our shrine. So there it is. That adds that. And we got a little tree foot guy here. Who's moved up here. So this time, when you click on him, it shows the maximum amount that he can move. Well, we're still not going to be able to cap the font even with 11 EP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move his speed... Uh, worth of AP. Now when I do that, that's going to leave me with 5 again. So I know that next turn when he gains 6, he'll be right back to his maximum AP count. Okay? So leave him at 5 if you run a Kathir Force. Leave him at uh, 4. If you do not run Kathir Force, leave him at 4 so that the next turn you'll have the maximum AP count. We're going to go ahead and uh, deploy... Um, the Nafari Grief Singer. She's got a plethora of AP. She has a Taxonic Well of Grief. Um, you can read the description there. Death Nova, so when she gets killed, she's going to do damage to things within two spaces over and a Sonic R. At the beginning of your opponent's turns, uh, all champions within two spaces of her take six Sonic damage, including your own. So make sure you don't keep your own champs uh, too close to her, okay? Uh, this is her damage. She has 11 damage, 6 speed, a 1 to 3 range, 1 defense, and 44 hit points. When hit points reach 0, she pops and goes on cooldown, which is listed in the upper right corner of your screen. Now, since we've moved uh, our maximums here, I'm going to go ahead and save my Nora for maybe deploying some more champs or something. So, I'll end turn. We'll watch what the computer does. He's finally going to cap his font. So that means now the computer is going to be gaining 12 for the, Lord, 12 for the font and 45 for the shrine. But this time I can cap my font as well. So I'll go ahead and move my Merc Demon down into the font area. So now I can cap my font. And if you're, you know, sometimes just sign it, you might be a space off. So make sure you click on the font and make sure that you have your unit inside that font zone. So now my Merc Demon at the end of the turn will cap that font for me so that next turn I will get 12 Nora plus 45 from my shrine. I'm going to go ahead and scry again. Every time you scry, your shrine takes 7 damage, um, but you do reveal another rune. And in some tight matches, uh, getting, what, getting the runes you need is very, very important. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move my sapling here, um, kind of in the middle of the field. We're going to leave him with 5 AP, so that I can gain his max next turn. Same thing with the Grief Bear, I'm just going to move her one. And um, this time, I'll go ahead and throw down uh, an Enraged Grizzly. A lot of hit points and pretty good damage on that guy, plus he has some detection to pick up stealth units. In turn and see there, I left my enraged grizzly too close to my own grief bear, and she caused six damage even to my own guy. Now, the computer's using a dwarven wind fury, two to five range, ten damage, six speed, one defense, 51 hit points. Um, he does have arrow throw, so that if I attack him from range and he misses, he's going to re attack me uh, and do two extra damage to it. So, you have to be kind of careful with that. Now, one cool ability to the little sapling guys here is that we can go up and take root. Now when I do that, he can't move anymore. He becomes completely immobile, okay? Um, and skirmisher, he can't attack anything but champions. But um, 
he gains multi-attack, which means that his attack is lower. Typically, most runes have a minimum of three and then an, a, another five to attack. Well, he gains multi-attack, so now our tree folk can actually attack twice in a round. Now, the computer doesn't do a very good job of using abilities. Typically, the Dwarven Wind Fury would have dodged that and then reposted onto the uh, sapling. But because intelligence is not quite there for the AI, um, it doesn't use it very well. So for my Merc Demon, I'm going to go ahead and stealth him so that the computer won't be able to find him anymore. Move him to his AP to where he can um, uh, get his max. And let's see if we can move our Grief Bearer up to where she can attack. She can attack, but what we can do is move her up beside of him to engage him. Now, when you do that, for this guy to be able to move now, it's going to cost him three extra AP just to pull away from her. So at the beginning of his turn, he's going to gain six. If he decides to disengage from the Grief Bearer, that's going to cost him at least three AP and then another three to attack. So he would be able to attack, but he's only going to be one space away from her. And with her Sonic Aura, she's going to do damage to this guy. So, um, you know, that's the importance of, of engaging ranged units, especially... Uh, with your melee guys because she can still attack him but he's going to have a real difficulty pulling away and attacking her um, now that we got that in play we're going to go ahead and throw down a wild elf okay wild elf is able to stealth he's got uh, detection and camouflage he takes a little bit less damage from range doesn't have a lot of hit points and stuff so these guys are typically referred to as a, as a utility champion Okay, we've got all of our guys parked at 5 AP, except for the two that we've kind of got engaged in combat here. And we're going to go ahead and end turn. Now, one thing you can do, if you want to, is you can uh, throw down a Night Blade, which will uh, give a unit evil R. So we'll put that on the Safari Grief uh, Singer here. So what it does is she has evil R, um, and she ignores defense that's greater than zero. So what's evil R? At the start of your opponent's turn, all champions within two spaces, including your own, uh, lose two hit points. They lose it, so it's a loss of a life effect. It's not actual damage, uh, which is very important because it bypasses a lot of defenses, including being impervious to damage. Uh, and that unit is healed by the total number of AP uh, hit point lost by the enemies. So she's going to heal for whatever damage she does with her arm. So when we in turn, she's going to do the six damage. Plus the two, he uses his sweep ability to push us away, and he kills off the tree sap. But not to worry. We've got some, some runes coming up to help take on this stuff. So what I want to do is enemy champs within three spaces take sonic damage equal to 75% of this champs and lose all AP. Okay, so if you wanted to keep them from attacking twice, then um, uh, you could use that. Like if they were trying to store AP like we've been doing, um, in order to attack twice, you have to have a minimum of 8 AP. Well, since this guy has 1 plus 6, he wouldn't be able to double attack anyway. But again, the computer doesn't do a very good job of storing AP. That just gives you an example. Now, the Well of Grief is enemy champion, so each one of these champions is going to take 75% of her 11 damage. So when we click that, she uses her ability, and you notice that it did different amounts. 8 here, 8 here, and 6 here. Now the reason it did less is because this guy has scale armor, and he takes less damage um, from attacks. So uh, the Archangel has a little bit of special defenses in there. Now, that's not considered an attack. So, if you'll notice, her attack button is still lit up. She still has 3 AP, so she can follow it up with an attack from her normal range, and that's what we'll do. Now, you'd be like, oh man, I lost 3 hit points in this guy, but remember, at the end of the turn, she has a Sonic Aura, so she's going to do another 6, plus another 2 from the Night Blade, so that unit will pop. Um, so he's done for. Now, our Merc Demon... Let's see, we're going to go ahead and stealth our wild elf, wild elf here. We'll move our Merc Demon up to collect the Nora Globe, so that'll increase the Nora. 
Okay. And we'll just kind of leave him out of sight, out of mind right now. Now, the computer, again, not very intelligent. So what it's going to do is kind of charge for our grizzly here and ignore our stealth piece, which is okay. Uh, we can handle that. But for right now, we're going to leave our grief singer there. She's going to kind of take the brunt of the damage and stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and call. There she heals. She kills off. The Wind Fury. And she takes a pretty big hit from the Archangel and from the Iron Fist Power. She's still alive, though, with four hit points. She's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and contest the computer's font with our Merc Demon. Since he's stealthed and the computer doesn't have any stealth, uh, de-stealthing units, we're going to sneak him up here behind the enemy lines and put him into the enemy font. So now, once we contest this font, the computer will not only not be able to deploy any champions here, but he also loses his 12 Nora turn uh, that comes as a result of that. So we'll go ahead and attack with our grief center. Okay. Now since she's pretty much dead and there's nothing that we're going to be able to do to save her pretty much, we're going to go ahead and sacrifice her. Now sacrifice says you spend 30 Nora, but you gain 85% of the Nora of the champion. So we're going to, go on, we're going to gain 85% of the 65 Nora. So if you'll notice, right now we have 119 Nora. Once we sack her, it does kill her and put her on cooldown, but it activates her death ability. So she does the damage around. She goes on cooldown for 13 turns, but look, our Nora climbed to 144. So now we can put in another champion. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, let's see, let's put in the guy with a little bit of damage here. We'll put in another Enraged Grizzly. And to speed the game up a little bit, we could even go ahead and put in a Temple of Brutality. Now, Temple of Brutality is a pretty nasty piece, and it's starting at the beginning of the next turn, which will be the opponent's turn. All champions suffer twice as much damage from melee attacks made by real champions. And um, so that means anytime you attack in melee now, your attack is going to do double damage. So you have to be careful with your placement and things like that in order to not get your champs killed. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to pull our bear back a little bit. Now, here's, this will be covered more in the uh, advanced uh, scenarios and stuff. But one thing that you want to do is you know that this Iron Fist Paladin is going to gain 5 AP next turn. So he'll have 5. You have to have 3 to attack. So you know that he can only move 2 spaces before he can attack. Okay, If he moves any more than 2 spaces without getting extra AP from somewhere, then he's not going to be able to attack. So as long as you keep your pieces more than 3 spaces away from this guy, he can't attack you. Now, the Archangel is a little bit different. He is going to have 7 more. He can have up to 11 maximum since the computer's playing Solid Iron Fist. So he'll have up to 11 max AP. Next turn, he'll have 10. So that means that he can move up to 8 spaces before he can attack. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he can attack our guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him 2 more spaces back. Now... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And because he has a range of one to two, he would still be able to attack. But he's not going to have enough AP because seven plus three is ten. That doesn't leave him enough to attack. So if we pull back to here, the computer will try to close in on this guy, but he won't be able to attack him because he won't have enough AP. And the same thing with the Iron Fist Minister. He'll gain six. One, two, three spaces. Most he can move and attack. So our guys are clearly out of range from any sorts of attacks. So let's see how the computer responds to having his font contested um, and the uh, the champs in play. Okay. So the computer's retreated to his font. He found our Merc Demon and in just one shot, you saw how much damage he done. 31 damage. And so our Merc Demon's going to bite the bullet. So the computer found him, but he retreated away back to his spot. Not a, uh, 
um, a tactic that I would recommend most of the time. Now, we're going to move the bear a little bit more than uh, his uh, one space there because I want to put in a thunder hoof at the top of the uh, uh, font zone here so that he doesn't have to move as far to attack. Now, because the computers are treated, what we can do is we can advance a little bit further now with our units. So we're going to move these guys up. And I'm going to take a chance that the computer doesn't find my guy here. Even if he does, one, two, three, four, the computer won't have enough AP to attack. Okay? So we'll stop there. You can see after deploying, we don't have very much noise, so we'll skip our turn. We'll pass our turn. And we'll see what the computer does. So he moves to attack range. It's the bear who becomes really mad about that. He has the rage ability. Every time he's attacked, um, he gets an extra plus five damage. The computer did end up running into my champion and was after it was too late. Well, this is why we store AP. Now, because all of our champs, uh, besides the ones that we had just put out, have maximum AP. It takes eight AP to attack twice in a round. So we know that our wild elf is going to be able to attack twice in a round, and our bear will be able to attack twice around if he can get within combat um, soon enough. So what we're going to do, we're going to move our bear over. Now, if you use power attack, it will not use the double damage from the Temple of Brutality. It goes off of uh, only basic attacks, or uh, it will after it's nerfed. So we'll see what happens when we power attack. That adds plus four, so it should be 23 damage. Minus the shield. So it did double it for right now, but the reason it did is because that nerf hasn't gone through yet. Um, if we just do a normal attack, it does 25 damage. So the Archangel is through. No more. Alright, now, you might be asking, well, why didn't it do, you know, like 38 damage? Well, it's because the Archangel has Aerial Supremacy, which gives them a higher defense, and the Scale Armor, which does reduce about 25%. Now, the Wild Elf versus the Iron Fist Paladin is going to be a different story. The Iron Fist Paladin doesn't have any base defenses in play. Now, again, this is kind of a more of an advanced technique, but we're going to go ahead and cover it in the basics here. When our Wild Elf attacks the Paladin, he will do 12 damage. Minus the three, so that's nine damage, but because the temple brutality is in play, it's going to double that. So when our wild elf attacks, it is going to do 18 damage. Or not. Uh, 21. And let's see why it did 21 damage. Well, I'm not exactly sure where. The, uh, the extra damage came from, to be honest with you. But typically, um, that's the way you calculate your damage. It's the damage minus the defense equals your net damage. Temple Brutality kind of plays with the mechanics a little bit. That's all right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and re-stealth our guy. So now he's stealth. We're going to creep our other bailer up here so that he'll have full AP and we're going to creep our thunder hoof up. Alright, now, since we don't want to take a ton of damage from these champs here, and this guy's going to be able to move one, two, three, and attack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Devolve on him. So when we Devolve him, his attack, speed, and defense all get lowered by half. So now this guy's only going to gain three plus his zero, so he's only going to have three AP next turn. He will only be able to move three spaces uh, next turn, so he will not be able to attack at the same time. That is when you use spells. You try to use spells at key times like that in order to make it your full advantage. So we'll see what the computer does here. He attacks our bear from range. The Iron Fist Manor executes and attacks the bear. And then he just moves his three. Now again, typically this guy would be able to block an attack. 
But because the computer doesn't necessarily utilize all of the abilities of Champ, it's not really going to attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Wild Elf and I'm going to attack. And he did a pile of damage. Now, um, this time the damage was closer uh, modified than what it should have been. 12 minus 1 is 11 times 2 is 22 and it did 23. So, um... It was a little bit closer this time. Now the bear, again, will power attack and try to finish this guy off. 45 damage. So it did the uh, 23 minus is 1 uh, is 22 times 2 is 44. So uh, it, it did 45. So it's pretty close to the mark. All right. Now our other bear, we'll move him up. Have him power attack. And the same thing, 45 damage. And let's see what we can do. Now, um, since we've moved all of our pieces, we can't uh, bring our Thunder Hoof up to attack because these guys, once you're engaged in a combat, you can't pull away from the combat, so see, um, unless they have special abilities and stuff. Now, because the bear wasn't engaged to the minister, he's able to back up a little, and that gives our thunderhoof room to get in. Now, this bear, however, doesn't have a special ability called mobility, so when we try to move him, if you'll notice over in your combat log, it says this target cannot disengage until next turn. He's locked in into that melee until the next turn. So keep in mind, if you ever engage a... Uh, another unit in melee. You cannot escape from that until after the next turn. So now we're going to go ahead and throw a red cap foot into play. We're going to attack the uh, Iron Fist Minister. Since he's so low, I didn't use the charge, which will give him a little bit of ability. That takes care of him. And let me see. Since Thunderhoof can be more of a damage dealer, I'm going to move. Uh, wild elf up here and let's see what we can do to uh, maybe keep them off of us. Uh, we can throw out a thorn trap. Now when that comes into play it's stealth. So the computer and other players cannot see that trap when it's thrown down. So when the computer moves he's actually going to kind of bump into this trap and we'll see how the computer reacts. Now with him having a 1 to 2 range he can still take that guy from range but he won't do the double damage because it's attacking from range. So we'll end our turn. And see what the computer does. He attacks a guy from range with the uh, grip in here. And the guard attacks him too. Now, what just happened is the computer set off that trap. So these guys have significantly lower uh, speeds. A 4 and a 3 now. And... They have become eviscerated, which causes damage every turn. Now, because we saved our charge from our Thunderhoof, I can charge into combat. And basically what charge does is it gives the champion an extra plus two damage, and he can move one to two spaces for three AP. So, but that only counts as a single attack on his attack chain, so he can attack again. So normally he wouldn't have been able to move at all, can still attack because of his AP, but because of charge, he was able to do both. Alright, so a good chunk of damage on the Archangel and the Bear. We'll just do a normal attack. That should finish off the Archangel with that. And then we'll power attack on the uh, Griffin Rider to do 34. And we'll park our other Bear at maximum AP. We'll move our Red Cat Twin up, throw her sister in play. Now when you do that, they gain significant bonuses, speed, defense, hit points, the whole works. So they work really well when both of them are in play. Now, Paladin Commander's in play. He's got a 6 speed. He's not going to be able to move an attack, so we really don't have to worry about taking the damage from our guys this time. Only the range guys going to be really be able to dish out any damage. Okay. So, uh, we won't worry about that. We'll go ahead and end turn. 
He attacks our bear, which enrages it again. Pouting Commander moves over. And again, not really a good idea if you're the computer to do that, but again, not very bright. But you have to live with what you live with, you know. So um, we'll move Thunderhoof up. And what we'll want to do when you when you're keeping your movements and things in mind, what we want to do is try to get it to where we can use our other pieces to full ability and not block them off. Because this guy has so little hit points, what we can do is we can actually send the bear up, have him attack the pouting commander. That leaves us 16 hit points, but he's got enough at left for another attack. So we'll double attack the paladin. That'll take him down. That frees up the thunder hoof. So we'll take the thunder hoof and have him finish off the griffin rider. And then we can take this bear and have him move to engage the other priests. Since she's a ranged unit, she's not going to be able to attack him who is adjacent. There has to be at least one space in between for ranged units to attack. Even if they have a range of 1 to 2. So even though 1 2 spaces is still on the back end of this piece. Because she's engaged in melee to him. She cannot attack that piece. So we'll move our red cap twins up. Park them at the maximum AP. So it's 5. And let's see. We've got a little bit of Nora going on. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll. Throw a rejuvenation ring on our bear to help him start healing up a little bit. And we'll go ahead and throw in another thunder hoof. Now, guys, the computer starts your pieces out at just one star. The more you play them, you'll gain character points, which will increase their stars eventually once you get 200 character points. And they add upgrades to these pieces. So your pieces get better the longer you play them and the more you character point. Okay? Let's see. That's in pretty good shape right now, so we'll end our turn. Now, to see how far a piece can shoot, you can literally hold your mouse over it, and it will show you uh, down here on the bottom where I've got my mouse over her attack. It will show you her range. So, if you want to know exactly what the other pieces can attack, and you want to keep your pieces outside that range, then that's a good idea. So, you know that right now she can shoot to these spaces. Because she's arranging it, what we want to do, we're going to pick up an ore piece in our wake here. We're going to move over, and we're going to set him up for a charge. So, Thunderhoof is going to charge him. And see, normally, without charge, you would not be able to move three spaces and still attack. But because of charge, he was able, he only had three AP left, but from two spaces out, he was able to move two spaces and attack. So, a uh, very good uh, ability. Now, can our Ethereal Priestess attack the bear from here? No, she can't because he's moved out of her range. So, we're going to park our bear there. We're going to bring Red Cap Twins up to assist the bear here. And since her damage is, uh, uh, well, actually, his is better since he was in range. We'll go ahead and attack with the Red Cap Twins. 30 damage, and she drops a Blood Ball. Now, the Blood Ball is from the ability of Bleed, and it basically drops a ball that any demon that picks it up is going to heal for 50% of the damage that she just inflicted. If you're not exactly sure how much damage she inflicts, she just, it tells you in the combat log everything that happens in the game. Uh, the Ethel Priest takes 30 physical damage from the Red Cap Twins, so that means that Blood Ball will be worth a 15-point heal um, because of uh, the damage she inflicted. So what we want to do is we want to box in the red, uh, the Ethel Priestess, keep her from attacking either one of our units. So she's wrapped up in melee with both of them. She can't attack either one. And what we've done at the same time is now contested the fawn up here. You'll notice that just even if one corner of a 2 by 2 unit encompasses the enemy's font, then that becomes a contested font. We're going to move our other pieces up. And we're going to go ahead and in turn. So now we've contested the font. So the player would lose uh, 12 Nora from that. 
The other priest just tries to move, but because it takes 3 AP plus 1 for every other character around, it took her 4 AP just to move one spot. So that's not good for her. So we're going to take our red cap twin, have her to attack again. She repeats the 30 damage, so she drops her Nora Globe. And uh, the Nora Globes leave a percentage of the Nora of the Peas. So uh, every time you pick up those Nora Globes, um, you are uh, collecting a piece of the champion that was left behind. Alright, we attack the uh, Relic. Relics can be used to contest fonts. So as long as that Relic is in that font zone, even though I have a champion there to claim it, if there's anything of the opponents in there besides a Summon or an Illusion Champion, then it can test the font. So there's a relic in there. So we want to get that out of there. So I'm going to move my other bear up to attack the relic. Destroys it. So now, at the end of the turn, I will claim that font because the opponent has no other runes in that font zone. Only my runes. And since my guys are real, they will claim that font for me. Now our Thunderhoof is going to go ahead and chase down the Ethel Priestess. We'll go ahead and let him lay a good, healthy addition of damage down on her. 24, and that's enough to finish her off. And he's thrown down Inquisitor Magnus. That's that 150,000 gold piece we was talking about in the last tutorial. Um, if you got the patient stuff, you can save for him. He's really nasty against Wrath guys because he's got Hunter Wrath, so he's going to do 50% more damage, and they deal less damage to him or hit. Okay, so we'll go ahead and end turn. Right now we're looking real good shape. 173 Nora. Uh, plus we've claimed both fonts now. So now we'll get 45 plus 12 plus 12. So right now we are gaining 69 Nora a turn. Okay. A pretty good lick. Now one of Thunderhoof's ability is, is he is able to attack shrines a lot better than some of the other pieces. Anytime that he attacks a shrine or relic, he gets plus three damage on that attack and he ignores the defense of the piece. So um, we're going to charge the shrine here. He's going to pick up the Nora Globe in the meantime, and he does 17 damage. Okay. Now Temple Brutality does not allow the pieces to do the extra damage to shrines uh, and things like that. Only champions. Okay. So um, Let's see, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get it to where Mr. Inquisitor Magnus here can't just lay a whopping down on us. So he can move uh, 7. He's going to gain 7 plus the uh, his cap of AP is 11. So he'll have 11 AP next turn. So that means he can move um, up to 8 spaces and still attack once or... He can move three spaces and attack twice. So one, two, three, four, five. He'll be able to move five spaces and attack my Thunderhoofs. But um, he shouldn't be able to kill him in just one attack. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll kind of take our other pieces, leave them at their max cap, AP, and we're going to kind of poison them around the Inquisitor here. We'll save the Blood Ball for later in case we need to heal up some. So regardless if he attacks the red cap or the thunder hoof, he's still going to have a couple of runes around him that's waiting to do some damage. Alright. We're going to go ahead and throw a grief singer in play. Now remember, she has the sonic aura, so keep her away from your pieces. Well, in turn. The computer does not advance with his magic, but he throws out a war saint, so we'll go ahead and have the Red Cap Twins open up a can of Bull Butt on the uh, War Saint. And we'll have our Thunderhoof come in, finish him up with a charge. Move our army in. Leaving them all at max AP. And we'll let Thunderhoof go ahead and enjoy a fresh dose of Smackdown on the Shrine.
We'll go ahead and capture the Nora Globe because we don't want the computer to get a hold of that. Or the opponent, typically. The computer doesn't really matter. So that now, if you're if you're trying to follow the events of the game and you're not exactly sure of, of the effects and stuff in the game, if you look up here on the top left, you'll notice that the Temple Brutality is in play, which doubles the damage from basic attacks or will after the nerf, and unobstructed view. So, computer just cast that, and that means that stealth units lose our stealth condition while that effect is in play. So, if you're not exactly sure what kind of effects are in play or even uh, what faction your opponent's playing, you can always look up here uh, in the um, this little area and it will kind of tell you all the uh, things going on in the game. Now, since we don't like Magus very much, we're going to go ahead and devolve him, which will slow him down significantly. And we're going to go ahead and uh, surround him so that we can do some pretty nasty damage. He's still resilient to that damage, uh, even with the brute temple brutality in play because of his hunter condition. But we're working on him, and that really slows his uh, stats down some. And we'll go ahead and have Thunderhoof to back up a space. Charge him his time. And attack again. So with the shrine just at one point, uh, you can use a spell, which automatically will do half uh, damage to shrines, or we can just go ahead and finish it up with the champion. And since champions actually gain uh, more character points uh, for doing things in the game, like uh, destroying the shrine and stuff, I'd recommend go ahead and just destroy it with the champion. So there's the, uh, the daily skirmish. We did it with the burning tree deck. Hopefully, you've learned some basics on uh, on gameplay. And here's our character points earned. Our Thunderhoof did the most, so he, he got the most character points. And if you'll notice that Enraged Grizzly that destroyed the shrine, uh, right there it is. He's the Conqueror, destroyed the enemy shrine. So he gets a little bit of buff of character points. So the more you use your pieces and the more they do in the game, the more character points they earn. So if you like, just throw out the Grey Singer we just threw out at the end there. She only gained three, um, but that's you know kind of how it works. We gained 300 gold, which is added to our total. And uh, we'll use that to buy one of the uh, Protected or the Wrath uh, runes. So uh, hopefully we've learned a little bit. But anyway, Bomb N007, we'll see you in game.